peace be unto you in the Lord Jesus Christ to our online visitors. God bless you. We thank you for tuning in. Put your hands together for those who are online. God bless you. We thank you for tuning in. You could have tuned in anywhere else, but you're right here with APC, and we thank you for that. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I got two of my three sisters here, and I am excited. They are my eldest sisters, uh, Michelle and Sharon. And I have one of my three nieces here. Amen. They have come, and I bless God for them, Miasha. They take very good care of me. And so I, I appreciate them and everything that they do. I understand time is far gone, so I'm only going to spend about three hours. I'm joking. Let's turn our Bibles to Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter number 8. Put your finger there and then find Jeremiah chapter 29. So you're going to Jeremiah 29 and you're going to have your finger in Romans chapter number 8. Sorry, and greetings to our men's president, Brother Cole, and to the team. When you've got Jeremiah chapter 29, we'll be looking at verse number 11 and verse number 12. When you've got it, let's all stand if possible. Just look at the person beside you and say, it's so good to see you. Oh, come on, tell them it's so good to see you. Ladies, this is the time you can look at the lady beside you on their shoe and say, you have nice shoes today. Look at your shoe. Your shoe is nice. Where you get those from? Men, just nod your head and say, good suit, good suit, good suit, good suit. You look sharp. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse number 11 and verse 12. Let's read that all together, everybody. One, two, three. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall he call upon me, and he shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Romans chapter number 8, verse number 18. This is the text that we will be gleaning from. We'll read verse number 18 and jump over to verse 29 and 30. When you've got it, just shout, I've got it. I got it. Let's read together, everybody. One, two, three. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed into the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, he also called, and whom he called, justified, and whom he justified, we also glorified. Before you take your seat, just a note in order for someone to be justified, they have to go through the justificational process. Before they could be sanctified, they have to go through the sanctificational process. Before they are glorified, they have to go through the glorificational process. Somebody say process. I like to use for a topic this afternoon, the director's cut. Wait for the glory. The director's cut. Wait for the glory. Father God, we thank you today. We thank you for all that you've done and all that you're about to do. Have your way in this house. We look to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the Lord Jesus Christ. I am going to be going kind of fast so that we can redeem the time that is lost, but hope 
and pray that the Lord will fill you with what he wants you to be filled with today uh, so that you leave here with something. Even though I believe that we all should be leaving here with victory as declared before. Amen? Amen. So, so, so I have an easy job because whether you get something or not, you got that you are victorious today. Amen? Amen. The director's cut, whenever you hear that term, it means a version of a movie that reflects the director's original intention, released after the first studio version. So a lot of times you'll see director's cut after a movie comes out, but does not display his original intention. So what you see sometimes isn't necessarily what the director wanted you to see. So he will come out with their own personal cut so you have more of a fuller understanding of where he or she is coming from. I want you to understand as we live today that a lot of us are not seeing life through the original intention that God would want us to see life. A matter of fact, we are following a script that is not written by God, but yet was written by the devil. Y'all follow me for a little bit. Uh, understand that there are things that happen in life that really should, shouldn't really happen, but because man have came off course and we're following a different cut, uh, we find ourselves in certain situations. But I want you to know today that we were born, I love this, I, I, it was in the notes and I'm glad God made it happen this morning, uh, we were born to be victorious. Now, if that isn't a confirmation for you, it ought to be a confirmation. I'm going to say it again. God said that you were born to be victorious. You were born to be victorious. And I need you to follow me real quickly on this as I try to make my point real clear. Um, Augustine says this, God is absolute being and therefore all other beings that is relative was made by him. No being that was made from nothing could be on par with God, nor could it even be at all were it to be made by him. End of quote. In other words, God made everything and there is nothing that he has made that is equal to the God that we serve. So the fact that he made you and I tells us that we can never be God. This is where Lucifer came into a, fault, uh, a shortcoming because he wanted the glory that God got and not realizing that he was also created by God. The moment you try to put yourself in the same position as God, you now become an idol and an offense to God. You got to be careful because if Lucifer tried to put himself on the same pedestal as God and got kicked out of heaven, imagine what will happen if you try to put yourself on the same pedestal as God and then he kicks you out of his glory. Someone say praise the Lord. In the theological talks, we talk about God being his pure actuality, which means when we talk about God being pure in actuality, we are saying that God does not have the ability not to exist or to be anything other than exist. In other words, it's saying, listen, God cannot switch a switch and turn off his godness. He is forever God. He cannot stop being who he is. He cannot stop being the God that he is. He cannot close his eyes and say, I'm going to stop being this now because that is no possibility for him to do. He is God and he has to be God all by himself at all times. Malachi 3, 6 says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, he sons of Jacob are not consumed. Understand these two things about God. Number one, he exists independently from everything else. In other words, God sustains himself. In other words, there is nothing that made God. God was always God. So that's why in Genesis 1 verse 1, it says, in the beginning, God. It wasn't in the beginning Confucius. It wasn't in the beginning Allah. It was in the beginning 
God because nothing created God. God was always God. In Colossians 1.17, he says, he is before all things. In Psalms 90 verse 2, the Bible says that he is from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. That there is no other God beside the God that we serve. A matter of fact, the Bible says that when God looks around, he says, I don't see no other beside me or before me because he is the only true and living God. Brother and sister, number two, God give existence to everything else. The, um, I got a quote here that says, honor thou God indeed as the author and Lord of all things. For there is no one superior to God or even like him among all the beings that exist. Understand that God gives meaning to everybody. God gives purpose to everybody because God himself is the one that gives it to us. We talked about Genesis 1 saying in the beginning God but then it goes on to say created the heavens and the earth. He's given purpose. He's given meaning. He's given sustenance to earth. In Colossians 1 16 it says for by him all things were created. All things created by him and for him. In Acts chapter Chapter 17, verse 28, Paul says, For in him we live and move and have our being, that we are sustained by this God that cannot cease to be in God. He holds us all together. The reason why you never lost your mind is because he held you together. The reason why you didn't go to jail is because he held you together. The reason why you didn't lose your mind and run off the cliff is because God held you together. Because he sustains everything at one time. Brothers and sisters, allow me to say this without apologies and not being sorry but if you think you come to church and God is waiting for you to praise him to make him feel like God you are wrong you're wasting your time if you feel like because you have a good suit and a good dress on and your hat is nice and you think that validates God for being God you're in the wrong church because God is still God whether you praise him or whether you don't a matter of fact, if you don't praise him, the rock will cry out. If you don't praise him, oh God, I feel it now, Holy Ghost. Even if you don't praise him, he will go to the 401 and White's Road, get a rock from the mess, make it roll down the street, make it burst through the door, make it come right beside you and Because every, oh God, because he has power and you don't have to praise him. You don't have to play the instruments to make God feel like God. He's God all by himself. He can't stop from being God. Brothers and sisters, whether you clap your hands or not, he's still God. Whether you open your mouth or not, he's still God. Whether you come to church or not, he's still God. Whether, my God, you show up, you cross your legs, you fold your arms, you close your eyes, he's still God. A matter of fact, the Bible says that the birds sing his praises. The wind whispers his name. The trees clap their hands. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So if you don't want to praise him, he will call a prostitute out of the John's bed and walk up in here and give him praise. He's God all by himself. If pastor doesn't want to pastor no more, he's still God. If the preacher don't want to preach no more, he's still God. If the singer don't want to sing no more, he's still God. At the end of the day, praise is a benefit that I give to God. Hallelujah.
brothers and sisters, understand that God doesn't need us, but we need him. We need him to survive. We need him to move. We need him to breathe. It has nothing to do with us. So because he is self-existent, he then we have to talk about the foreknowledge of God. The fact that God knows everything. Everything he knows. How does he know everything? Because he is God. He created everything. Everything is sustained by him. So to be foreknowledge is that God knows everything. And because he knows everything, we then talk about the foreordained things of God. Or better yet, uh, the predestination of God. Uh, that God knows your beginning, your end from your beginning. Uh, he looks at the beginning of time uh, and he sees you coming. Uh, and he knows when you'll be leaving. Uh, because he has all power to orchestrate everything uh, the way that he wants it to be done. Uh, the God's power has determined the course of the whole world and the people within it. Uh, everything that you're going through uh, everything that you are facing uh, God already knew it uh, and he had put it into place oh, we're going to talk today uh, understand that everything you face uh, God already knew it was going to come uh, if I could say this pastor if you don't mind uh, God does not have to answer any prayer when we pray right now uh, because he knew you were going to pray it uh, before you got onto the earth uh, and so watch this uh, he will then send the answer before you prayed it. So now what does that mean? That means when I pray, in order for me to receive what God has already answered, I got to then have faith. My faith will connect me to my answer because God saw me praying before I was on my knees praying. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It is impossible to please God without faith. So God has put things into motion. He has orchestrated everything. Acts chapter 4, 28 says, For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel had determined before to be done. 1 Corinthians 2, 7, But we speak of the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Ephesians 1 and 11, Having predestinated us unto to the adoption of the children by Jesus Christ himself uh, according to the good pleasure of his will uh, in whom also uh, we have obtained an inheritance uh, being predestined uh, according to the purpose of him who worketh all things uh, after the counsel uh, of his own will uh, and we also read in Romans 8 uh, for he foreknew uh, he also predestinated uh, to be conformed uh, to the the image of his son that we might be the firstborn among many brethren moreover he who he predestinated then he also called and whom he called he also justified and whom he justified he has also glorified everything you've been through has been scripted it has been pre-planned beforehand before the earth was formed, everything you went through, everything you're going through, has been pre-planned before. The best way for me to explain this is to really do it in what I love to do. I love to write stories and scripts and plays. So the best way for me to explain what was just spoken, allow me to bring you to the process of a writer's mind. A writer sits down one day and has a thought of a story. And the story in his mind says there's going to be a man who has to rescue his friends from danger from across town. Now the writer in his head is now putting together the world in which these people are going to live. These people do not have a choice, but they're going to live in 
in a world uh, that was not formed by them, uh, but formed by someone uh, that was greater than them. Uh, the writer then sits down uh, and he says, now uh, let me put this story together. Uh, he creates a protagonist, uh, which is a main character. Uh, understand this. Uh, in the mind of the writer, uh, everything about the protagonist uh, is in the mind of the author. Uh, he knows the height that he would be. Uh, he knows the color he would be. Uh, he knows the, 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 the things that he would like. Uh, the writer understands uh, and knows everything about this creator uh, or about the character rather uh, before the character even comes into existence. Uh, the writer knows about his beliefs and his morals uh, his strengths and his standards and his weaknesses. Uh, a matter of fact let's go to the Bible. Uh, the Bible says I'm fearfully uh, and wonderfully made uh, marvelous are thy works uh, and my soul knows right well. Uh, watch this brothers and sisters. Uh, there is nothing that the writer does not know about this character. Uh, so much so that the writer places within the character special qualities in which the character will have to discover throughout the story. Brothers and sisters, when God created Adam and Eve before they came into existence, God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion and over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. This was before Adam and Eve were even conscious or even put in together, that God had already already determined uh, that inside of them uh, would be power and greatness. Uh, can I say this to you? Uh, that before you were born, uh, God had placed some things in you uh, to make you realize that you are more powerful uh, than what they will tell you you are. Uh, because you are in the image uh, of the one that created. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, they created things uh, inside the character. Uh, but the only way uh, for those things to be made manifest uh, is if they're discovered uh, while going through life. Uh, the next thing the writer says says. Uh, the writer then puts together uh, a supporting cast. Uh, these people uh, are the ones that come along the main character. Uh, they don't run the story, uh, but they help the story to move along. Uh, there's some people in your life uh, that God will put in your life uh, to help you move along. Uh, but there's some people that you placed in your life uh, that you may have to drop off uh, so that you can and move along. Brothers and sisters, the writer says, I'm going to put supporting cast that will help him reach his purpose and reach his goal. Brothers and sisters, here uh, is the clinch of it all. Uh, is that while the writer uh, is writing the main character uh, and everything that is in him uh, and everything about him, uh, and as uh, he's writing the supporting cast, uh, the greatest thing uh, that we may have a problem with uh, is that the writer understands uh, that there has to be some sort of trial uh, or some sort of test uh, because in order to get what is inside of them, uh, they're going to have to go through some stuff uh, to get it out of them. Uh, so the writer sits down uh, and he puts together uh, an antagonist, uh, which means an enemy or an adversary. Uh, the whole purpose uh, is to hinder, to stop, to block, uh, and even to kill uh, the protagonist uh, from getting their goal. Uh, in other words, uh, there are going to be people in your life uh, that are going to try to stop you uh, from getting what God uh, has purpose for you. Uh, they're going to 
be people in your life uh, that's going to try to stop you uh, from getting what God uh, wants you to have. Uh, there's going to be people in your life uh, that's going to come and hinder you uh, from becoming great uh, that God wants you to be. Uh, all because uh, there's something in you. Uh, but I want you to understand this afternoon. Uh, they're in your life not to destroy you, uh, but to bring out uh, that which is inside of you. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, not only would he use uh, an enemy to come uh, and to try you, uh, but he'll also use uh, situations and circumstances uh, that will allow you to really test uh, who you are. You think I'm joking? All right, here's the Bible. Uh, back in Matthew 26, uh, 21 and 22, uh, we have the story of Jesus with his 12 disciples uh, at the last supper uh, sitting around a table uh, and Jesus says something uh, that blows their mind uh, he says one of you is going to betray me. Now these are people that walked with Christ. These are people that talked with Christ. These are people that slept with Christ. These are people that saw Christ do great miracles. You would think that they would know what they would do. But when they heard the question they were sorrowful. Not because I don't believe because he was going to be betrayed but because they didn't know if it was them that was going to do the betraying. Huh? So they said, is it I? Is it I? Is it I? Huh? What these people walked huh? with Christ. Huh? These people moved huh? with Christ. Huh? These people have been taught huh? by Christ. Huh? But you never know what you do huh? unless you're put in a situation huh? that will bring the truth out of you. Huh? So what they were saying was huh? is it I? Because I don't know what I would do. Huh? Alright, you still quiet. Let me help you again. Huh? Peter said, I will never betray you. I will never leave you. I got your back. I'm ride or die. I'm going all the way with you. And when it was time, Peter declined Christ three times because of the fact I may know who I am now. But if you put me in a different situation, I may hold. I may think I know who I am now, but if you put me in a different situation, I may say I love my daughter to death. I love her to death. And I may say if anybody touches her, I'm going to pray for them. Let God deal with them. But then someone touches her and then I have a prison ministry. APC prison ministry uh, revival happening every Monday uh, come visit me if you can uh, but I'm telling you uh, until you're in a situation uh, you don't understand uh, how to handle it uh, don't come to me uh, if you haven't been through anything uh, I need somebody uh, who's been through something uh, to help me go through You could tell me God will. You could tell me God can. But did he do it for you? Do you have a testimony? Were you a drunk? Were you an alcoholic? Were you a weed smoker? Were you ever in prison? I need to know somebody who's been there to tell me this is how you overcome. Because... Brothers and sisters, we will never know who we really are till we go and get into situations that we do not like. Mary Nelson says this, there are certain things in life that God can reveal to us only in the midst of adversity. There are hidden places deep in our soul he can only reach through our suffering. 
that the only way uh, for God to deal with us uh, is when he puts us through something, uh, when we have to fight something, uh, when we have to defeat something. Uh, we may not like the Goliath uh, that is in our way, uh, but we got to fight him anyways uh, because our fight uh, will determine who uh, we really are. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, let me say it this way. Uh, the script from the beginning of time uh, was set for us to follow. Uh, it was a script that would take us straight uh, into glory. Uh, but sin came in. Uh, I'm a prophesy. Uh, and sin came in uh, and detoured us. Uh, and then we followed a different path, uh, a different way. Uh, and we're going down this route. Uh, the issue is this. The actual writer of the script, uh, he realizes that we were going off track uh, and we started doing things our own way. Uh, and then we come to him and say, uh, why did you make me go through this? Uh, why do I have to go through this? Uh, why didn't you send help? Uh, and God looks at us uh, and says, number one, you came off the script. Number two, I told you not to date him. Number three, your supporting cast told you not to date him. Number four, the extras in your life told you not to date him. A matter of fact, number five, he himself told you, baby, don't mess with me. And you still came and you still did what it is that you wanted to do. Don't blame the writer. Blame the fact that you came off script. You came off script, you are off script, and now we're going down a slanted slope on the way to hell. But I know the writer, the writer said, before you get there, I'm going to redo the original director's cut so that you understand you don't have to go that way. So in the fullness of time, God came in flesh. Uh, put on a body, uh, walked around the earth, uh, did some miracles, uh, taught some lessons, uh, healed some people. Uh, but when it was time, uh, he realized uh, my purpose uh, is to save you uh, from your sin. Uh, so in order to do that, that which I need to do that uh, is not on the outer, uh, but it's on the inner. Uh, and I have to get it out. Uh, and in order for me to do that, uh, I got to go up Calvary's cross hill uh, to the cross uh, at Calvary. Uh, so uh, when it was time, uh, he went, uh, he did what he had to do. Uh, the devil, uh, the adversary, uh, the antagonist uh, said, all right, uh, it's time to end who? his life. Uh, oh, God almighty. Uh, and so he came and he put himself, not the enemy, the enemy could not kill him. He had to lay down his own life and rise it back up again. So in order for the purpose to be made manifest, they stretched him high, they hung him high, they stretched him wide, they hung him high, he hung his head and for me and you, he died, but that is not where the power was. Uh, the power was still uh, inside of him. Uh, the soldiers came uh, and they broke the leg uh, of one thief. Uh, they went to the next one, uh, broke the leg of the other thief. Uh, but when they came to Jesus, uh, you see when you're from God, uh, there are certain things the devil can do to you. Uh, there are certain prophecies uh, that the devil can hinder. Uh, no bone uh, shall I'll be broken so that power uh, that is inside of him uh, is still in him uh, men is still not redeemed uh, so uh, the bible says uh, the soldier went uh, with a spear uh, and 
poked him and out came blood and water. There's my deliverance. It was in him all along. Watch this. If Moses had to kill a thousand calves just to redeem the people, but Christ only had to spill a little bit of blood to redeem the whole world. What a God! Brothers and sisters, the story does not end there. Oh God, open your imaginations with me for just a couple more minutes, I promise. Brothers and sisters, so now the enemy is standing before God. And the enemy is saying, God, come here, Brother Cole. Come here, Brother Cole. He's saying, God, we have here mankind. They have sinned. They have fallen short. And the spiritual law is, as long as sin is there, they belong to me. Because you are a holy God. I might backtrack a bit, y'all. And God says, continue talking. I know you created him, Lord. He's fashioned in your image. He's perfect the way he is, but he's sinful. And that is not of you. God said, all right, you must not recognize something yet. The devil says, what? But before God could answer, the devil's cell phone goes off. And he answers the phone. And he says, hello, I'm busy. And the demon says, well, remember that Jesus that we're buried and that we're brought down here yes well he's okay right now but I have a funny feeling like something's about to happen call me when something greater happens then he goes back into the courtroom and he starts debating with God for another day the second day goes by the third day goes by and there's a ring on the phone he said listen I'm about to get the verdict I'm about to get the right to the souls of all these people the demon on the next line says well there's a problem. What's the problem? Well, that Jesus person that we captured, that was doing all those miracles, that were delivering all those people, the one that we hung high, we stretched wide, put a crown or throw it on his head. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that Jesus. What about him? Well, uh, he came out of his dungeon. He started preaching to those who are down here. Okay, and well, he saw your office. Okay, and he broke the door in. Uh, uh, did he take anything? Well, uh, that's the problem. Uh, he took the keys uh, of death, hell, uh, and the grave. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, the devil says, uh, hold on. Uh, where is uh, Jesus now? Uh, well, uh, he left. Uh, and last time we saw him, uh, he showed himself uh, to 500 people. He showed himself to the apostles. And then, and then what? And then, and then what? Well, right when the demon was going to tell him what happened, there was a bush at the door. And the devil said, never mind. I know where he is. He's right here. Coming down with something in his hand. The devil was panicky. The devil tried to cut the courtroom fast. Lord, he's guilty. And I saw Jesus pull up beside mankind and said he did not have an attorney present when you charged him. So I will be the attorney that will speak for him. The Bible says... He is the mediator uh, between God uh, and man. Uh, so Jesus said, uh, may I uh, approach uh, the bench. Uh, come on, devil. Uh, let's approach it uh, together. Uh, and I saw uh, Jesus.
Jesus, take the blood. Redemption is paid. Oh God, but hold on. The devil thought he was smart. The devil said, God, this is good, but they're going to fall again. They're going to fall again. They're going to walk away from you. They're going to make you feel like you wasted your time. And right when Jesus was going to answer, mankind stepped in and said, Lord, let me have this one. And he looked at the devil and he said, now unto him that is it. Able to keep me from falling and present me faultless. But I have to go through it. I have to go through the pain. I have to go through the suffering. I have to go through the hurt so that the glory shall be revealed. Let me go through it. Let me go through it. Let me go through it. I will be glorified. The thing that you are going through, the pain that you are going through, the hurt that you're going through, it's to put you back together again. So that when God looks at you, he's seeing himself. When God returns back, he's looking for spitting images of himself. So everything you've been through was to get you to this point. Wait for the glory. All the hell you had to endure, all the pain you had to go through, wasn't to kill you, but to bring that which is inside of you out. Everything you've been through, whether you've been raped, whether you've been lied upon, whether they turned their back on you, it got you to the point of realizing who you are. And at the end of it all, there shall be a glory that is revealed. Because he came and he applied the blood and said, this is the director's cut. This is what I wanted you to see in the first place. Can we all stand? If you're here today, and I'm going to hand over to Pastor. If you're here today, now once again, I believe altar call was done when we talked about we had the victory. But if you're here today, And you've been through some things that you don't even mention to people. And there are times you still feel like you're struggling with it. Can you come to this altar, please? Come, 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 come. Please come. There are things you're still fighting with. Things you're still trying to understand. Things that may still have you captive. You've come to church. You've heard the messages preached. You, you felt good on Sunday, but Monday came. And you always say, I wish Sunday would be every day. Come, 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 come. There are some things that you just wish you didn't have to go through.
as you are at the altar and as you are coming. Balcony, if you're up there, come. Don't make the walk down stop you. If you're in the back, come. If you're under the sound of my voice, come. Take my yoke upon you. Jesus says, and learn of me. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. If you're at the altar, just repeat this with me as pastor comes. It was all for the glory. So I'm going to wait for the glory. I believe everyone that moved to the altar moved because they have a measure of faith that whatever they have been through or whatever they are in right now, God has a purpose. But one of the greatest mistakes you could make is to believe in the predestinational process of the purpose of God so much that you forget that you have a free will to respond to what God intends for you to respond to. You see, God is not going to make you do what you don't want to do. He prepared and made provision in advance. But you've got to respond to him by your free will. And if he prepares and you do not respond, that's how you end up being lost. I'm inviting everyone here today just to make a step demonstrating your free will that you know that Jesus Christ is the answer. He has a plan for you to be conformed ultimately to his image. But you've got to come and allow the potter to work on your clay life. Would you make your way in? I'm going to invite not only those who see the need, but I'm going to ask some of our praying saints and ministers and people who are concerned about helping others through the process. Your prayer means so much. You're coming alongside and pairing with them, laying hands on and pouring in a little bit of oil and wine means so much. So can we get some of the praying folks to get just circulating right now? Find someone beside you. Even if you are here as a believer and you have some issues you're working through, lay yourself on the altar and become a hand outreach to stretch to someone else right now. Let's begin to do that. That's right. Thank you for responding. Thank you. Folks are still coming in this altar. Would you make room for them, everybody? Just moving a little bit more. Folks are still coming, and I believe it's a day for the Lord to work on those who are waiting. He's going to work on those who are waiting. Hallelujah. Begin to pray now, everybody. Ask God to take away all of your sins. Some of the things you're going through, you don't have to go through if you surrender your life to the Lord. God has a plan. The enemy has a plan. But to whom you yield yourself servant to obey, his servant you are. He will only glorify that which is justified. And your faith is your justification. And your faith requires you to come. He that cometh to God must believe. Your faith requires that you come to Jesus. Don't stay in the sin. Don't rationalize. Don't delay. Don't procrastinate. Begin to talk to him right now. He's here working. The potter is here working. The miracle worker is here working. The Savior is here working. Healing and delivering. Cleansing and